Hey guys, Coach over here from the Car Bazaar, and it's uh, been like seven months since I did a video. Um, been busy with uh, work, football season, and all the stuff that's happening with uh, COVID-19. Um, I'm sure everyone's been feeling the same effects as I have, especially being a content creator and all that stuff. The channel's still uh, up and running, and I know I'm a magic lore uh, persona, per se, um, but in this video, I want to show y'all uh, about analyzing and basically making your own Magic the Gathering database based on URLs, based on different websites. Um, I got the idea from trying to play around with different stuff with trying to actually create my own databases for uh, football, for different sports and all that. And I decided I wanted to do a video over um, looking at different cards and like deck list and the market and from different sets uh, with Magic the Gathering. Um, this is not information that's completely on my own. Um, I actually watched a seven and a half minute video, which will I'll link at the bottom. Um, if you want to do this stuff with different websites, but for this target, I want to use uh, Magic the Gathering as the example. Okay, so I will leave the link in uh, below. Um, this is just something I learned from another uh, YouTuber. Uh, I think it's micro. I think it's uh, Success in Excel, one of the channel's names, um, but. Basically, I want to show y'all what I've been up to. But the first thing I want to go over is, um, for this example, uh, we're going to be basically making our own combined database uh, based on different sets from Magic the Gathering. And I want, just want to use an example. I'm going to use uh, the core sets 2019 through 2021 just to start us off because the more data you have, the longer it's going to take. And we're going to use these three sets. We're going to use two different websites, scryfall.com, which is a great database right off the bat. However, as far as I know, it doesn't have it to where you can combine uh, the different data sets to where you could see everything in one information. And then you also have TCG Player. Just something to compare it with. And as far as Scryfall is concerned, if you wanted to analyze the information even more, with TCG Player, you just go to the set and go to the price guide. It's simple enough. But with Scryfall.com, I just want to show you all that if you do end up picking a set from scryfall.com, let's say if you want to pick Zendikar Rising, whenever you click on the set that you want to look at, it's going to always show up usually as a default for images. And before you even start, if you want to grab the URL, you want to do it as a checklist because this is the kind of display that you want to see right from the get go. Okay. So we're going to start off with that. All right. So, not with Zendikar Rising per se, but we're gonna start with our first URL. So I'm gonna click on A2 and I'm gonna control C. I'm gonna copy that information, okay? The next thing I wanna do is go under the data tab and click the button from web. And it's gonna come up with two options, basic and advanced from the web. And I wanna paste the URL right there. We're not doing anything crazy. We just want the website. Um, the first time doing this, it's gonna ask you for, I think permission or whatnot. Um, it's going to connect to the website and it's going to give you some uh, different display options. And the one we want, we don't want this first one where it's a bunch of useless information. We want the table version. All right. Something like this. Okay. So once you see your stuff right here, once you see the cards and uh, the cost and the type, Scryfall is very good about this. That's why I like using them a whole bunch. I'm going to click load to, and I want to load to an existing worksheet. I want to actually use um, what I'm referencing and I want the, the table data on the same worksheet. So make sure you have table um, marked and have an existing worksheet if that's not your default already. And then the last thing you want, when you click existing worksheet, place where you want it to go. And for me, I want C1, I'm going to click OK. Now what this is going to do is going to take that first set of tabled data um, from M21, and it's going to look like this. It'll have a, a queries and connections, 397 rows loaded, uh, six errors. That's usually with the tickets or that there's no price per se. And then from here, I want to right click and I want to right click to where I could edit this information because we want to turn this into a function. Okay. So I want to go over to, uh, here's your power query editor. And from here, I want to go to my advanced editor. And for a bunch of y'all, I say it's simple. Um, and I, at first, when I saw this from the previous video, 
um, that I was referencing, it looks like a whole bunch, but it's actually not as bad as you think. Um, we're actually just gonna enter um, a couple commands to run this as a function. So we're gonna go with let, I don't want to capitalize per se. I just, uh, let's go with the let function and we're gonna say get results just like this with an equal sign and open parentheses and URL with a close parentheses, a space, an equal sign and an arrow going to our right, okay? The next thing you wanna do is the source. You wanna change this to URL because we're gonna be referencing multiple websites just like that. And with the last thing we want is we wanna go with in get results. You'll see it right here once you uh, establish it in the first line of coding, all right, or the first line of the command. Uh, make sure there's no syntax errors have been uh, detected. You're gonna click done. And if you do this the first time, it's gonna bring up where um, they'll be like, you have to have privacy settings. Uh, usually what I did was I clicked the box where it said ignored because this is gonna be a personalized database. I don't really care about if anything's like leaked or anything. That's what it's trying to get at from a security standpoint. Um, and for me, I wanna like reference the video that this person used. And so I wanna say this function, we're gonna say it's the first table F results one. Um, you could basically name this as much as anything you want, but you just wanna make sure this matches for the next set, all right? Um, so we're gonna, everything looks good. We're gonna close and load the information. We're gonna load the formula and it's gonna disappear. Still in your queries and connections. Now it's a function where it has uh, F and X, all right? The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna use this as a table and we're gonna analyze everything from all three of these. So under your data tab, after you highlight this, you're gonna to go to your data tab and now you're gonna go from table and range. All right, and it's gonna bring up this create table. Um, we're basically gonna make a table of information, all this combined data. And my table does have headers cause I have the URL and I'm gonna click okay. All right, and so from here, just wanna make sure my queries are good. All right, I do wanna change table 10 to something else. I wanna name it like table one. All right, just to match it with the F results one. All right, just like that. So you can rename it. And then for the table one, I do want to add a column to this because I want different information coming in. All right, so you're going to click add column and a custom column. I want to name my stuff results. And then it's whatever you named the function. So I named mine F results one. And then you're gonna open parentheses and you're gonna have a URL. You could just insert it like that and close it off and just make sure there's no syntax errors detected. We're gonna click okay. And it's gonna bring up this other table after it after you go over the privacy settings. Just ignore it if you want this to truly be a, like a pers your own personal database. Um, and then from here to finish off, we're gonna click this button right here with the two arrows going left and right, all right? Um, me personally, I don't like to use the prefixes because we named them results because I want these to be the names. And for me, um, this is where you can customize your tables, uh, what you want to see. And I want to take the language out of the way. All right. So now when you click OK, it's going to give you all this different information. Um, but these are all, this is your preview of the combined sets. If everything looks good, I want to close and load to because I want it on the same worksheet. You could do this a little bit differently if you want to have it on a, a completely new worksheet, that's fine, but I like everything to where it's gonna be on the same page. Same thing as previous, um, have it to an existing worksheet, and I wanna click OK, because then it's gonna bring all the information with what you're referencing. That way, if you get to the point where if you want to add more stuff, you just edit the formula or you just edit the table and you could update the connection to where now you can get another set. Uh, all right, so right here, my connections are done. Um, just for visual purposes, it's already tabled out information. So for me, I like everything in the center. I like everything aligned in the middle. And now this information is tabled to where you could separate however you want. Scryfall is really good about 
having these different bits of information and you can make your own database to where if you want to see like the cost of certain things, you could use this as a reference point. So if you want to use all of the sets of magic, um, it's going to take a little bit of time. I've already been working on most of it, which I'll probably put in my Patreon page. Uh, stuff I've been working on where there's over 100 sets you can analyze. And but I mean, at this point, you could sort however you want. So if you want to sort from Z to A, A to Z, the different cost as far as your mana cost, um, your artifacts. And then this gives you a data set to where you could basically analyze these three results however you want. So if your combined results, if you wanna see what the highest cards um, are priced at, there you go. You can go from right there. And with this, you could even table the results and filter it however you want. So if you just wanted stuff from uh, two sets instead of one, uh, you could go to the sort and filter and do everything with basic Excel functions. You'll still have this information over here. So if you wanted to do like a sum if or a count if function uh, to get like copies and what's been uh, being used over and over as far as uh, like, you know, cards that have been being reprinted or functional reprints or actually uh, not real functional, but true reprints, then you go ahead and do those functions because now you have a true table of data. This could expand however much you want, but just for this and how the speed of it, we just wanted three sets. Okay, so that's with the Scryfall data. Now I want to show you with the TCG player data, having two sets of data because uh, is good because it's not only going to work for one set of data or one set, one uh, URL or the other. So we're going to do the same exact thing with TCG player. All right, so let's go over. I want to copy this and I want to go to my data tab from the web. All right, and so I want to go ahead and paste that. All right, and it should bring up to where it's gonna do the same thing as with the scryfall data, where I'm gonna get a table and it's gonna look something like this. Both of these websites are very good for doing stuff like this. I'm gonna to load to the website. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna to add to my existing worksheet. So C1 is where I usually like to place stuff. As you can see, my other connections are coming up. F results one with table one. This is gonna be named table zero. Eventually I'm gonna name this to table two in just a second. But remember, we're going to edit this data because we wanna turn this into a function. So you're gonna go uh, right click and edit, and then you're gonna to go to the advanced editor from the Power Query, and you're going to do the same thing. So we're gonna say let get results. Just make sure it's spelled correctly because um, I've happened to do that sometimes before, close it off space and with your own arrow, make sure you change this to a URL because we want it to be a function. And then in get results. So the function should be good to go. Awesome. All right. I want to name this F results two. Just for simplicity, uh, for me, for instance, you you guys can name it whatever you want. Just make sure it matches with uh, whenever you do the add column for the next stuff. I'm going to close and load and this stuff's going to disappear. And then I want to do the second portion of this, which I want to get from a table and range. So make sure your table has headers right there. This is the part where we're going to add a column again. Um, make sure, like for me, for simplicity's sake, Table 13, I don't want it to be called table 13. I want it to be called table two, just to match with the function. Um, like a, you could keep the names however you want. This is just for organizational purposes on my end. Um, once I have table two set, I'm gonna add a column, add custom column. And then I wanna do the same thing. I wanna do get result, uh, not get results, but results as my column name. And then F results two, it should start showing up with an open parentheses. You could literally type URL, but I just like to insert it just for uh, speed. I'm gonna hit okay, and it's gonna show up as your table. Last thing you wanna do is click on the double arrows, and I really just want to get the market price. Um, TCG player happens to put the median and stuff, which you could leave that in there, uh, but I just wanna get the market price. Click okay, okay, and you have these expanded results. Okay, everything looks good. We'll go back to the home page, close and load to 
We're gonna to load to our existing worksheet to C1. We're gonna hit okay, and it's going to get the data from there. So now you have two different websites getting, and, and as far as data is concerned, you got uh, 2019 and Core Set 2021, the same information I got over here. So now from here, if you wanted to, you can compare the two different prices using uh, basic Excel functions, um, like a sum if, a count if, um, anything that has to do with either a filter or anything that has to do with getting some sort of um, data to be exact. Like if you want to do like an exact name, you could go from there. Um, I could show you that if you guys in the comment section, section if you want to write that stuff out um, after this video. Uh, but this is it. So now, like for me, I like to close off my URL a little bit. And then I like to make sure everything's in the middle. You could do this however you want. But now since all this information is tabled off, you could see what uh, the market price is for like, let's say Crucible of Worlds. You could also do this to where you could change it to the decimal point of different stuff, different prices like that. So if you want to see instead of 39.5, 39.50, like a basic uh, monetary system, you can go from there. But you got two database of information. Um, like I said, you could add more stuff to this or you can basically make your own set with um, hundreds of pieces of data. Uh, if you just want to see what I have been working on, um, so like me, I like having the core sets, all 20, uh, 21 core sets so far, um, the expansion sets right over here from Scryfall, and then just to compare later on, we'll have TCG Player, MTG, and eventually I'll get to Yu-Gi-Oh, Pokemon, um, just to see the data sets as far as the market's concerned. But really, I want to use these data sets, and I also have one where it combines all of these, or at least all of the main ones that I want to look at because I want to start looking at them from a competitive standpoint. And Scryfall is super useful because of just really just the type and really because of the mana cost. And even, yeah, both both of these, it makes Scryfall super useful and you could use this information many ways. Um, the next video will go over how to look at a deck list and see how we can analyze it from there using Scryfall as the main database and then using MTG top eight. So basically that's how you make your own database. Um, it gives you some ideas, you content creators who want to rank different cards, or I know Nizahone Magic you know, has his own way of doing stuff. But if you want to find a way to analyze cards in a different fashion using Excel, something super simple, you could go with this, what I've been showing y'all. But guys, that's all I have. Like I said, I'm gonna leave a link in the description for that first video that I referenced um, with as far as you know, expanding your knowledge on Excel. But this is, I wanted to be specific. I wanted to go with Magic Gathering. Um, if you guys like this video, you want to see more of it. I know I'm usually a lore channel, but I've been working with data uh, for the last parts with uh, football and all that. And this is what I ended up, you know, coming up with, with a little bit of help from YouTube. Um, so if you guys have any questions, leave them in the uh, comment section. Uh, for my patrons, I'm going to probably leave this MTG database once I'm almost done with it or once I'm getting done with it and start making updates and whatnot. So that way you have something to work with if you don't, don't want to do this on your own. So that's all I have, everyone. Um, Coach over here from the Car Bazaar uh, signing off, and I will see you guys in the next video.